Finding Stuff Out, the show where you send in your questions and I search for the answers. Today, the show is all about animals, big and small. Sorry, I'm a little excited. I mean, today's my birthday and I got these cool gift certificates and they say right on them, valid for any animal. So I said, bring me a dinosaur. It's a joke. I mean, everyone knows dinosaurs are extinct, right? So apparently there's a close relative of dinosaurs that's still alive, and it's on its way over. What if it smashes something? Or eats a guest? Okay, stay calm. Let's take our first question from Vito. Do dinosaurs eat people? Okay, so I'm a little obsessed today. My research says no, because dinosaurs were extinct before we existed. But if you're asking, would dinosaurs eat people if they were still alive today? I'd answer, we may very unfortunately find out at the end of the show. <laughs> hmm, maybe I should have asked for a hamster instead. Now here's a question from Kiara. Why are people scared of big animals and that small one? The short answer is teeth. It's better to be the eater than the eatin, right? Cause I'm big, my life is sweet. All the creatures I eat are meat. But so small, their life is brief. You get stuck right in my teeth. See, cause I'm big and I'm mighty. Like a T-Rex, I'm pretty bite. So step back when I'm on attack. Whack! You're gonna be my snack. some big animals that don't bite, like elephants, might crush you by accident. But you know what? Some people are scared of small animals too, with good reason. Scorpions and tarantulas are small, but they have nasty, venomous stings. Some kinds of frogs are poisonous if you eat them. And some snakes, like this sea snake, can kill you with one bite. Poison and venom are small animals' way of saying, don't even think about eating me. It's lucky big animals don't do that. Can you imagine a poisonous giraffe or a venomous cow? Scary, I wouldn't want to milk one of those. Speaking of big, here's a question from Alexa. Why are some animals big and others small? To answer your question, please welcome evolutionary biologist, Andrew Hendry. Hi. Hi. Thank you for being on the show but I'm not sure I want to thank your spider here. Can spiders actually get that big? Well, have you ever seen one this big? Uh, no, I haven't. <laughs> yeah, that's actually right. Spiders and insects don't get this big. They're built very differently from us. They have their skeletons on the outside, and it's made of something called chitin, not bone. And so they can't get that big. Cool. Hang on, I think I might have actually ordered a dinosaur. What? Antelopes? Antelopes? I thought I ordered ants for my ant farm. Oh, I guess ants, antelope, easy typo. Well, they provide a good example of why animals evolved to be big or small. Isn't it just the dad, the mom, and the baby? Nope, these are all full-grown adults of three different species, and each one is adapted to a different way of life. So why would they need to be different sizes? Well, evolution is all about getting dinner, but not being dinner. And so each of these things has a different way of getting dinner and avoiding being dinner. So this little one here mm -hmm. feeds mostly on small bushes, and this one feeds on a bit higher bushes, this one higher bushes still. What? So each of them is specialized for a different way of life, a different niche in life, a different type of food. And then these guys also avoid getting uh, eaten in different ways too. These guys hide, these guys are better runners. So each one has found its own way of uh, fitting into the world and adapting to its own little niche. But they're all related, right? Yes, they all had the same ancestral antelope uh, many millions of years ago. So my turtle Fluffy is a little small. Am I not feeding him enough or something? Oh, well, he's going to get bigger, that's for sure. He'll get about as big as your head, actually, so you'll need to get a bigger aquarium. I've heard that some turtles can get really big. Look. Yeah, some turtles do get big. Some of the tortoises could be like 10 times your weight. So I'd take 10 Harrisons and you would have a giant tortoise. So it's good to be big for several reasons. One is that if you're a large uh, turtle in the water, you can go into much colder water because the bigger you are, the easier it is to keep your heat in. Oh, okay. 
And for the tortoises that are really big on land, they don't have any competitors. They're on small islands, and so they grow really big because there are no things like cows or deer or elephants or giraffes that are feeding on the plants there. So they can yeah. uh, get big to fill that niche. So you know the movie King Kong with the giant ape and the dinosaurs and stuff? If there was an island and there was a monkey on it, would it really grow as big as King Kong? Uh, no, no, I'm afraid the science of King Kong is all wrong. Monkeys wouldn't get bigger on islands, but some things do get bigger on islands. So I just mentioned the, the giant tortoise. So yeah. they do get big on islands like that. Okay. But what's cool is that big things tend to get small, and small things tend to get really big. And the reason is, is that uh, there's not that much food on islands, so big things can't get enough food, and so they evolve to be smaller. Uh, small things tend to get bigger on islands because they don't need to uh, hide from predators. So I guess King Kong isn't so big anymore. <laughs> so let me get this straight. Animals can be big or small depending on where they live, what their predators are, and what they eat. There isn't just one simple answer? No, if there were, I wouldn't have this cool job. And I wouldn't have this cool question from Mackenzie. Is it better to be big or small? In nature, where meat-loving creatures are just waiting to make us into hamburgers, it's sometimes good to be bigger than the thing that wants to eat you. Or is it always? So, Mackenzie, your question brings us to... Our Great Challenge! Hello, and welcome to today's Great Challenge. Today our challengers are Haley and Aspen. Hi. Today, you're going to be carnivores. Okay. Okay, so I see you guys got your carnivore uh, arms here. Now the goal, what you have to do, you have to fill up your stomach because you're, you're foraging, okay? So I set up your favorite prey all around the room, and when I say go, you have 30 seconds to collect as much of it as you can into your stomach. Are you ready? Yes. On your marks. Get set. Go! go. Come on, you guys, you got to fill your stomachs. Come on, you're hungry, hungry, hungry. Faster. Go, 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 go. Your stomach's full. Keep going. Shove it in there. Come on, there you go. You have 10 seconds left. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, stop. So now we're going to weigh your stomachs to see who the winner is. Let's take Aspen's. Here, okay, we'll put it on that one. Haley. Take yours. Are you ready? Okay, let's see who the winner is. Oh, it looks like Aspen's our winner. Congratulations. Yay! Yeah! So what does this have to do with whether it's better to be big or small? Well, let's see what they ate and what they didn't eat. Let's open up these stumps. You can't even get it all out. <laughs> it looks like they ate all the big stuff. Then look at this. All this small stuff over here they didn't eat any of the gummy bears. So that's one of the advantages to being small is that you can hide from some predators because they don't want to eat you because you don't have as much energy and you don't fill up their stomach as quickly. Awesome. We have prizes for both of you, so you can open those up right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for playing My Great Challenge. So, Andrew, do you think you could stick around for a while? I hear there's a dinosaur coming. Things could get exciting. If there's a dinosaur coming, I can stick around for a long while. Hiding increases the odds of survival. Andrew, if the dinosaur being delivered here turns out to be really fierce, you might want to squeeze it under here. Okay. Here's a question from Sophie. Why are some dogs huge and others are tiny? Actually, Sophie, I found out the answer this morning. You won't believe what happened. I was doing some research when all of a sudden... Harrison, did you order a horse? Yes, Mom, it's for my party. I used one of my animal gift certificates to rent a horse. I'm having a rodeo theme. Yeehaw! You didn't send the horse upstairs, did you? Howdy, ma'am. Is my horse back in the yard? No, he's right there behind you. Where? <laughs> Turns out his name is Rocky. <laughs> it's like a dog. <laughs> and this is his owner, Shanna Hadlock. She breeds horses. <laughs> and that's Rocky's mom, Sky. So, like my turtle, Fluffy, he's small, but he's gonna get really big. Is it the same with these horses? I uh, know she's done growing, and he'll grow a bit more, but he probably won't be as tall as his mom. I promised all my friends there'd be horseback riding. How am I supposed to ride this? Well, these horses weren't really bred to be ridden. 
What do you mean when you say they weren't bred to be ridden? Well, originally they were bred to be used in the coal mines. So they used them to go down the coal mines because they were small? Yep, they would pull the coal out. So are they small because of the way they're bred? Yep, like we choose the parents, mm -hmm. and when you t take two small parents, you get small babies. Yeah. Like his mother is 30 and 3 quarter inches tall, but his father is only 29 and 3 quarter wow. inches tall, and he'll probably be in between the two. If you kept breeding them, would they get smaller and smaller, or would they stay about the same? Um, if you kept breeding small horses to another small horse, mm -hmm. and then bred their offspring to smaller horses, mm -hmm. they eventually they get smaller and smaller and smaller. So maybe in a long time from now we'll have little miniature horses. <laughs> it, well, they actually have what is called a dwarf miniature horse. The smallest horse in the world is a dwarf, and her name's Thumbelina. And how big is she? She's 19 and a half inches tall, if I remember right. It's cute, but not very practical for horseback riding. I guess the take-home message would be, next time you say, Daddy, I want a pony, make sure to specify size. Thanks, Sophie, for your question about dogs. And I'm glad that little horse came in handy for something. I mean, I did some research on why some dogs are big and small, and it's actually really cool. Dogs have been bred to do different things. For instance, sheep dogs were bred to herd sheep, so they have to be big. They actually bump the sheep to make them go where they're supposed to. I mean, a chihuahua couldn't do that unless he was herding mice. Hey, wouldn't it be cool if you could breed dinosaurs, like the size of little hamsters? You could play with them and put them in your pocket and take them to school. I would never eat Harrison. I'm big and scary and not that big and scary, but I'm pretty big and scary. But I wouldn't eat Harrison because I'm a nice guy, right? Yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, sorry. You probably want another question. This one's from Ishai. Why is the biggest animal that ever lived on Earth? Yar, har, har. Whoa. Whoa. I got Earth. I'm Harris Tottle, an ancient Greek scientist, and I discovered that the biggest animal ever were giants, human giants. Look at this giant bone I found. It's its leg bone. B five four bum. That hypothesis was dumb. When ancient people found huge bones of extinct animals, they thought they must be giants, like Jack and the Beanstalk. So even though the bones look similar to human bones, there were never any giant people. But what is the biggest animal that ever lived? Do you think it's a bear? Or maybe an elephant? What about a rhinoceros? I looked it up, and the biggest land animal ever was probably the Argentinosaurus. Notice how everything comes back to dinosaurs? The Argentinosaurus was so big, it was about as big as three school buses. But guess what? That's not the biggest animal that has ever lived. Check this out. Fortunately, the biggest animal that ever lived is still alive, and it's gentle. It's the blue whale. And these are beluga whales. To find out more about them, I went to the sea aquarium to speak to marine specialist Nicole Can. Compared to blue whales, these guys are wimps, pipsqueaks. Oh, come on, don't make fun of the belugas. Although you're right, they are a lot smaller than the blue whales. Blue whales can get to be up to 100 feet long or 33 meters. That's the same size as an NBA basketball court. Whoa, I heard that they could fit an elephant on their tongue. You're absolutely right, they can. <laughs> Would you go off my tongue, please? But really, if you compare this killer whale, Stuffy, yeah. to the size of our belugas here, mm -hmm. that's about how big a beluga <laughs> is compared to a blue whale. Wow. There aren't many pictures of blue whales around because they were almost hunted to extinction, but they're slowly making a comeback. Can I see this for a second? Sure. Oh, it's pretty nice. Sweet, see ya. Harrison! <laughs> <laughs> well, since we know the blue whale is the biggest animal that ever lived, the dinosaur coming here later probably won't be quite that big, but it should be amusing. From big to small, here's the next question. What is the smallest animal in the world? Well, Jonah, it depends on what you mean by animal. An amoeba is a living creature that is only one cell. You have to look through a microscope to be able to see it. 
But as far as creatures that we normally think of as animals, this hummingbird is the smallest bird in the world. Being tiny helps it get nectar from small flowers. The smallest bat in the world, the hog-nosed bat, is about the size of a butterfly. It's small because it lives on insects. And well, you can't exactly fill up on those, which is why big bats eat fruit, mice, fish, and even other bats. We even have primate relatives that can fit on your finger, like the pygmy marmoset. I'm the smallest! No, I'm the smallest! You're a big baboon! Sorry. Here's another question. It's from Maxime. Are there bugs so small you can't see them? Unfortunately, yes. Take a look. Using my super zoomomatic, you can see these creepy eyelash thingies. Ugh. Here's a bug you can't see without a microscope. It's an eyelash mite. The mites live on your eyelashes. It's making me queasy, so let's look at something else. Why do big whales have to be nice if they're so big? Your question, Brianna, has the honor of being today's... <laughs> Try this at home. It's easy to be nice if you're big, because if you're big, you don't get bullied. That's why lots of animals try to make themselves look bigger. It's nature's way of saying, back off. There's more to me than you think. Now our do try this at home is to make yourself look as big as possible. So do this. Stand on your tippy toes, wave your arms back and forth like a peacock tail, start jumping up and down, and make your cheeks big and puffy like a puffer fish. Then again, kids on the playground would think you were just weird. But there are things people do, like animals, to make themselves look bigger. In martial arts class, they teach you a pose that makes you look big and muscular, like this. Just standing like this makes me feel brave. Dr. Hendry, the dinosaur, it's here! Hey, it's not big at all. It must be a velociraptor. Hey, it's a parrot! A parrot? I know this bird. It's Coco. But he's not a dinosaur. There's been another mistake. No, 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 no mistake at all. Birds are the great, 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 great grandchildren of dinosaurs. They even still are dinosaurs. But he's a parrot. How is he related to dinosaurs? Well, dinosaurs evolved over very long periods of time through little changes year by year until over millions and millions of years, those little changes add up to big ones, going all the way from dinosaurs up to birds. Millions of years, millions of little changes, dino claws to parrot feet, scales to feathers, teeth to beak, velociraptor to polywater cracker, no! You're gonna make my head explode! Wow, that one really hurt. Anyway, how does a dinosaur turn into Coco here? I mean, I don't look exactly like my grandparents, but at least there's a little bit of a resemblance. Well, think about your family tree like this. You have your great-great-great-grandparents here, and then it grows up through time until you have yourself and all your brothers and sisters and cousins at the top. Well, dinosaurs are the same way. You had the first dinosaur, and then it evolved into a whole bunch of different dinosaurs growing up through time, and eventually on one of those branches you had the evolution of feathers. And feathers were important because they helped keep the dinosaurs warm. And then those feathers through time became useful for gliding and then for flying. And so that branch on which feathers evolved eventually became birds. And so birds are the last living descendants of dinosaurs. And they still are dinosaurs. You don't suppose Coco still thinks he's a dinosaur, right? Fear me! Whoa! Coco still does think he's a dinosaur. Which reminds me of a question that I promised to answer by the end of the show. Do dinosaurs eat people? The big answer is... No! Thank goodness. They're extinct, but their great-great-grandkids can bite. Animals are always changing to adapt to their environments, but who knows? Maybe a small animal today will be gigantic in a million years from now. So, the take-home message is... Be extra nice to parents. See you next time on Finding Stuff Out. Nice birdie. Cause I'm big, my life is sweet.